rise and shine with the Word of God. Wake up Saturday mornings with a purpose. Tune in at 10 a.m. and join Antonia Roman as she sings and reads the Word of God. The Word of God will give you insight for the purpose in your life. Now here is your host, Antonia Roman. Hello this morning, my friends, and thank you for joining us again for the Word of God podcast. As you know, every Saturday we dive into the Word of God, where the Word of God sparks us, gives us life, it encourages us, it prepares us, it instructs us, and most of all, gives us life. My friends, thank you for joining us this morning, and if you are joining us for the first time, we welcome you. As you know, we have been in the book of Job these past couple of weeks, and we have uh, learned about Job's life about what happened to him, what he's enduring, what he's facing right now in his life. And uh, he has friends who have come over to visit him. And one friend has started to give him advice. And Job listened to what his friend was saying. And then Job started to respond, to respond to it back to him and give him an answer. Now, If you have not been following along with us reading the book of Job, I implore you to do so. We can learn a lot from Job and his story. And we can see how we can apply to our lives today what he has been experiencing. Because many times, my friends, when we read the Bible... We read stories that resonate with what's currently happening in our lives. So I know that this book of Job could really bless you, have you understand what how someone endures something in their life and how they handle it. So we are um, in chapter 6 of the book of Job. We're going to pick up where we left off. We're going to start in verse 11 this morning. Read down somewhat and then stop. And then we will see what it's telling us. So here goes. And Job chapter 6, starting in verse 11. What strength do I have that I should hope? And what is my end that I should prolong my life? Is my strength the strength of stones? Or is my flesh bronze? Is my help not within me? and is success driven from me. To him who is afflicted, kindness should be shown by his friend, even though he forsakes the fear of the Almighty. My brothers have dealt deceitfully like a brook, like the streams of the brooks that pass away, which are dark because of the ice and into which the snow vanishes. When it is warm, they cease to flow. When it is hot, they vanish from their place. The paths of their way turn aside. They go nowhere and perish. The caravans of Temeluk, the travelers of Sheba hope for them. They are disappointed because they were confident. They come there and are confused. For now you are nothing. You see terror and are afraid. Did I ever say bring something to me or offer a bribe for me from your wealth or deliver me from the enemy's hand or redeem me from the hand of oppressors? We'll leave it right there. Father, thank you so much for your word. I know your word is truth. Your word gives us life. Your word encourages us. It sparks us. It really resonates with our spirit. Some of the things that Job is going through. We thank you for the lessons and the journey of Job so that we would understand and fulfill our journey in this life as we fulfill our purpose on this earth. So I thank you for your word. Amen. You know, my friends, Job for a while had been speaking to his friend about where he was, to all his friends, his three friends that came to visit him, about where he was in his heart 
Joel was really feeling down and out. Uh, he was being hard on himself. And then one of his friends began to give him advice, you know, about what his friend perceived things to be that were happening with Job and how Job should handle it, what he should do. You know, his friend was assuming that Job had, you know, committed a, a, a grand sin and this is why he was facing what he was facing. But as we discussed several episodes back, um, that wasn't the case. You know, Job was a man who was uh, faithful to God. He was a man of integrity. He was an intercessor for people, for himself, for his family. And then this just happened to him because of what God orchestrated and allowed Satan to do in Job's life. Because God knows his children and God knows when his children will either, uh, you know, they'll, they'll, um, they'll cave in or they will uh, stay strong and continue to fight the good fight to have eventually the future breakthrough that God will give them. And as you know, we um, uh, having Job respond back to his friend and telling his friend, like, you know, uh, you, you, you know you, you get, you're not getting me quite correctly. Remember, Job himself didn't know what God had orchestrated. Right. So he was just going every day through the motions of what he was enduring, but not really um, also knowing that this was orchestrated by God. But then to now be told and confronted by a friend and be accused or assumed that he had done something wrong. You know, it could become very disheartening when you start to listen to your friends who can kind of be telling you like, hey, I think you've done something wrong. Right. Even though you know you may have always done right. And uh, when it says here, uh, Job is questioning, you know, what strength do I have that I should hope? In other words, remember, but Job was a little down on himself. He was, um, he was very um, discouraged. I'm sure very depressed. Um, he was exhausted. He was overwhelmed. Um, he was, you know... <sighs> facing such a calamity in his life right now that you know sometimes when we're down and out all of a sudden you know our minds take over right and we start to wonder and doubt and question so he asked his friend you know what strength do I have that I should hope like in other words what is left of me to feel like I should have hope you know even with the smallest strength that I have we should all have hope. Um, but in Job's case, you know, he's down and out. So he's like asking his friend, like, what strength do I have Do I have that I should have hope? Like, what's there left in me where I can handle such things and still believe that there is hope for me in the future? Now, a lot of us, we've spoken like that and we've thought that those things that have that have come across our minds and we voice that I'm sure we always will question a friend and say well, what what do you expect me to do like this is all I have left in me I don't have anything more I can't give any more right and what is my end that I should prolong my life in other words he's like you know what is my end that I should prolong my life like what's the end goal to what I'm supposed to be doing here now to prolong my life what else could I possibly do you know I am where I am right now in this situation there's not anything much further I could possibly do because I've already experienced all this and I'm here in this moment so what should I do to prolong my my life like what else could I possibly do you know what other thought processes could I actually put into place to have me live longer. Remember, Job was already earlier when he was speaking to his friends, you know, saying to them, like, he, he didn't even understand why he would be alive to have experienced this. Why was he even born to have to experience this misery right now that he's experiencing in his life? 
And when we feel that way down and down, we're like, well, questioning, well, why was I even born? Why am I even here? What's the purpose of this? If I've lost, lost it all, if everything that I thought was in the palm of my hand is gone, you know, everything's been wiped. I've been wiped out. There's nothing left for me. You know, we start to think of our lives and our situations and we start to go, well, why am I even here? Why am I even living? Right now for Job, these are, these are critical, vital questions, you know, because he's going through what he's going through. And when we go through what we go through, my friends, we start to question as well. And, and, you know, a friend comes to us and starts saying things to us. We then start questioning that friend, Right. We start questioning that friend about our situation or what their opinion is or what we have or what we don't have. And he says here, is my strength the strength of stones or is my flesh bronze? You know, Job is not a man made out of steel. <laughs> you know, he's not a man made out of a hard rock and especially bronze, which is heavy, you know, Um He's a man in the flesh, experiencing a real-life dilemma, a real-life catastrophe. And for him, because he's in the flesh, our flesh becomes weak, my friends. Our spirit can be strong, but our flesh becomes weak, right? And there are times that... Even though our flesh is weak, we will in the spirit continue to press through because we're believing that, you know, this weakness that we have in our bodies, this um, situation that's happening to us in our bodies, that eventually we could get some type of a breakthrough. And for Job right now, you know, he's asking his friends these things because he's like explaining to his friends like, I don't know why you would think that, you know, I wouldn't be suffering the way I'm suffering because I'm only human. I'm not made out of all these other illusional things that people feel that I should be, um, you know, uh, foreseeing or experiencing. This is really hitting me hard. This is a hard situation, circumstance that I'm in, in my life right now. And he says to them, is my help not within me and is success driven from me you know there are times my friends that we could be in situations where everything is just down and out nothing is helping uh we have tried everything possible we just can't get things done correctly or things just won't turn around but somehow inside of us we know that if we have in our hearts a relationship with God and that he's been ultimately the one who's been helping us, that either the help could come from within if we believe and know spiritually that we have a connection with God and God could do a miracle in our lives, but that we cannot at times just help ourselves without God being in our lives. Now, there are many people, my friends, that go around saying, well, I'll just help myself. I know what I got to do, right? We get that attitude sometimes, but then we realize that even though we have that attitude and we're saying, we're going to get it done this way, you know, we're going to be able to do it ourselves. We ultimately cannot accomplish anything in our lives without the help of our heavenly father without the supernatural power that he ha contains, without the Holy Spirit that will guide us and our anchor Jesus Christ, who's the foundation. Now, for many of us who are Christians, those are the main key things that we're supposed to be focused on and holding on to constantly, no matter what happens in our lives. Now, as we mentioned earlier, we read chapters, you know, a couple of scriptures earlier, you know, Job was a man of integrity. He feared the Lord. And even though he was down and out on himself, he didn't curse God. He was cursing himself, but he didn't curse God. You know, and sometimes even in being weary and tired and exhausted, 
as Job was, there is still that glimpse of hope inside of him, that future possibility of what God could do in his life and standing strong no matter what, no matter how exhausted you are, no matter how weary you might be feeling. You really try to stay strong in the Lord. You try to press through. You try to contain yourself and say, Lord, no matter how bad this is in my situation, I'm going to stand still. I'm going to see what possibly could come forward with what you're going to do. You know, and then as his friend was telling him stuff and questioning him, Job is now telling his friend back an answer although the three are listening of his friends and he's also asking them questions like really dude like what do you think I'm I'm made of stone like dude you don't expect me to break down and have this emotional moment in my life when I'm going through chaotic things I've lost so much I've lost my livelihood I've lost my children I have a wife who's bitter and treats me you know, at this point, really, uh, you know, disrespectfully, you know, but I'm still trying to hang in there. What makes you think that these things are not going to affect me or I'm not going to feel how I feel? Because we're only human, my friends, right? When we have these conversations without, without friends, we're only human. We only want to let it out of us, right? I have a friend right now, I'm daily, uh, uh, you know, a good friend of mine right now that she's going through something really hard right now. And, you know, I'm just listening to what she has to say. And I've caught myself on one or two occasions being Eliphaz asking, like, well, you sure you didn't do something wrong? You sure you didn't do the right thing? Like, are you sure you didn't set this up accordingly, but you just forgot? I was being an Eliphaz just recently, you know? And then I have to catch myself and say, wait, wait, wait a minute. You know what? I, I, I might be jumping to the conclusions. I might just be making assumptions. I might be just thinking like, well, if this is happening this way, there was a trajectory that started like, I'm just coming on to to my own opinions and conclusions, right? Well, I'm not supposed to be doing that. And that's what Eliphaz was doing. So I had to say to myself, you know what? I cannot be an Eliphaz. And if anything, I have to just be in listening ear and a friend by this person's side uh, and try to help the best I can. And that's it. But not not making any more recommendations, not making any more statements, not asking any more thousand questions. I'm just going to be a good listening friend um, just to help my friend who's, uh, you know, letting this off their chest uh, deal, you know, deal with the situation. And I'm just going to be a listening ear. And, you know, so as Job is asking, you know, his friends these questions, his friend Eliphaz these questions, and, and look, I'm sure he's looking at all of three, his three friends and saying this, you know, this is a way for us to understand where Job is at. Job is not just a man who has, like, accepted it all and not questioned. He's constantly also questioning. You know, now he's questioning his friends. <laughs> like, really, dude? Like, you don't think that I'd be, like emotional about this or that this wouldn't hit me hard i'm not made of stone i'm not a brick (laughs) you know we all have a heart we're human you know and things do affect us and we do react to the way things do affect us at times sometimes we might react irrationally and sometimes we might act rationally depends what the situation is and then joe goes to him who is afflicted, kindness should be shown by his friend. In other words, he's saying to his friend, like, look, I'm afflicted. I've gone through all of this right now. You surely show me some type of kindness. Don't start to, like, press me against the wall and question me or interrogate me or ask questions. Like, I'm the convent here. I'm the, uh, you know, I'm the... Um, I'm the suspect. I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm the person who's, like... Uh, who's done the wrong, like, don't do that to me. Can you at least show me some type of kindness? If I'm sharing from my heart, my situation, just show me kindness. You don't have to like try to beat me up on top of the fact that I already feel beaten up. (laughs) You know, you don't have to throw any more punches. You don't have to throw any more fiery darts my way when I'm already feeling like they're all over my body because I have a body full of boils right now. So like, you know, you don't have to continue to add more fire or coal to my situation. I, I would love to just 
he has some type of kindness coming out of you, right? Kind words, kinder words if possible. And then he goes, even though he forsakes the fear of the Almighty, my brothers have dealt deceitfully like a brook, like the streams of the brooks that pass away, because which are dark because of the ice and into which the snow vanishes. When it is warm, they cease to flow. And when it's hot, they vanish from their place. You know, he's actually saying to his friends, you know what? You know, um, instead of showing me kindness when you know that I fear the Lord and I, I wouldn't do anything against the Lord, you know my character, you know who I am. Instead, you've come with some harsh words and now you are also, you know, being deceived <laughs> like everybody else. Like, you know, you're supposed to be my friend. You're supposed to know my character. You're supposed to know who I am. What I've stood for all these years. You're supposed to know where my heart has always been. My intentions, good intentions at that. You know, but obviously you've come here and you've got something else going on with you. You know, that you can't see beyond uh, what's happening here. You know, I may not understand it myself, Job is saying, because, you know, I'm still trying to figure out, like, why is this happening to me? Why did this happen to me? This happened to me. And I'm sure Job was probably thinking and recapping his life, you know, about this situation. But then his friends are also recapping his life, too, but also adding a chapter to the story of his life that doesn't really exist. And we have friends that do that to us all the time. They will add a chapter to our lives that does not exist. Because they've made up the story themselves. They've come to a conclusion themselves. They believe that whatever they have said um, is really going to add to the story of your life. But what they don't realize is that they're not adding a good part to the chapter of your story you know it's uh they're coming in and just you know making it up you know it's uh it's fiction you know what they come up and 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 bring forth and um he then says here you know which are dark because of the ice and into which the snow vanishes when it is warm they cease to flow when it's hot they vanish from their place you know Job is comparing right now his friends to dilemmas of how we see things happen during situations uh, of darkness because of the ice or into the snow vanishes. When it is warm, they cease to flow. So in other words, he's speaking about like, you know, they seem to, to, to flow one way and then change to another. And when they do that, you know, um, that's someone in is that someone who has like one foot in and one foot out when jesus speaks about you know you can't be lukewarm right you can't just go this way you know we you know how we say in everyday life oh i'm just going with the flow right so if the wind blows this way to the right you're gonna go that way the wind blows to the left you're gonna go that way if the wind pushes you down well i guess you're gonna fall and that's where you're gonna go like we are always um Instead of staying grounded in everything that we know of and have been taught and know about someone, we always will make the wrong assumptions about someone. <clears throat> we will draw our own conclusions. And Job is saying to his friend and his other friends that are listening, like, come on, dudes, like, you know who I am. You know my character. You know what I would do or not do. I wouldn't go against God's word. I wouldn't go against his commandments. I wouldn't have uh, all of this happen to me just because I went and I tried to do something that I felt was more viable for me to be doing. I'm not that person. I am me. And right now what I am facing in my life is horrible. And I already feel torn down. I don't need you guys to come here and try to tear me down even more. Listen, this happens to us sometimes when we're having conversations with our friends. And then he says, The paths of their way turn aside. 
They go nowhere and perish. The caravans of Timaluk, the travelers of Sheba, hope for them. You know, there are times, my friends, where friends in our lives come and go. There's no doubt about that. We know that. There are people who come to our lives certain seasons and then they disappear. There are people who are, will always be in our life for many seasons. And sometimes they even disappear too. But then there are other people that have always been in our lives forever. Whether that's family, neighbors, you know, that you live in a neighborhood where, you know, you guys were born there and then everyone's growing up together. So you've known each other for a long time. And um, we all know as we grow up knowing each other, whether that's family or neighbors or whatever the case might be, that we tend to uh, go sometimes different ways, different paths in our lives. Uh, we have, may have all had a conversation about, hey, this is the way we're going to go. This is what we're going to do. But as we get older circumstances change in our lives our ideologies like of when we were kids and having certain discussions they can change and people will go a different way a different path and you know right now in this situation with his three friends who've known him forever you know job is kind of starting to feel like his friends may have uh you know gone down a different path uh of how they think about him uh, how they perceive him now. Of how they're judging him now. And let me tell you something. That happens all the times with our friends. You know, um, there's an assumption sometimes made about friends that could be very hurt, hurtful. Very hurtful. And at times could be very disheartening. Because it can ruin relationships. And I don't know about you, but I'm in the business of building relationships, not destroying relationships. So we have a lot to learn here in this passage of scripture. Of how Job is answering his friends and having them see and understand from his point of view the situation. Now, I don't know about you, but if I was Job, you know, I'd be determining, like, do I even want to keep, you know, having my friends over at this moment and maybe even feeding them stuff so they could just continue to, like, talk to me. But Job was a very respectful man. He did not um, disrespect them in any way. He did not throw them out of his house. He allowed them to stay there. And he just continued in conversation cordially. Um, and you know what? Um, there's nothing like being able to speak with friends that even though they might be saying something that's hurting you or you feel is not right, that you still continue a conversation with them because you still care for them. And you still you know, have respect for them. And you still love them. You know, and you know them. And you're just figuring out that in this moment, you know, they're just, uh, they may have gone down a path which is totally different from what you're used to seeing them in. So all these questions they're giving you and all these statements they're making to you is questionable to you because you're like, wait a minute, dude, but you never used to think like this. You never used to speak like this. The same way they're saying to Job, hey, Job, you never speak like this. You're the guy who's always been, you know, helping people and the intercessor and encouraging people. And you've always helped people, even financially, whatever. Okay, you know, we never heard you speak like this. Well, Job is kind of on the flip side saying the same thing like, hey, you know, I never heard you guys be, you other us speaking like this either, come to conclusions about me and my life and what I've done or haven't done. Like, this is not your way of being. Like, what happened with you and your opinions or situation right now of me? Why are you going left field on me? Hey, my friends, this is what happens sometimes. And then he goes, um... They are disappointed because they were confident they come there and are confused. 
You know, many times people will come to visit you very confidently um, because they just, you know, they're your friend and they're like, well, I can just, you know, come here and um, go visit you at your house or whatever, hang with you, whatever. But then they themselves get a little confused about your situation. You know, I've had a situation in my past when I've had people question me about my marriage. You know, and a lot of people would say to me, I don't know, I'm confused. You know, if you suffered these the first years of your marriage, and then why are you still with your husband? And I'm like, because God could take a situation that is very chaotic, very disturbed, very disheartening, very painful and he can heal us from that situation and put us back on track to where we're supposed to be to continue to have that good relationship in the marriage to go forward and for many Christians that is where we supposed to stand on strong with in belief that our Heavenly Father can turn our situation around and make it better. We're not supposed to just be standing on the way that the world thinks and automatically responds and reacts to situations with marriages where ultimately the result is always they want to get a divorce. They want to separate. They just feel that's the better way to go. For us, we endure the... We endure... Uh, each other's burdens, right? It says carry each other's burdens. And we are also um, facing the situation at hand, even though it's bad. I know for me, I used to tell people all the time, I don't need you to be confused about anything of me in my life. I know where I am right now in my life. I know how my Heavenly Father is dealing with me in my life. I know my circumstance in my life. I don't need you to be confused about anything. You don't have to worry about my life. You don't have to try to figure me out. You don't have to try to figure out why I'm still married. You don't have to try to figure out why I, why I endured, why I endure, why I experienced what I experienced. You don't have to figure any of that out. There's no confusion. There should be no confusion for you. Because it's not your life. It's my life. Now, I, a lot of times I feel when people say that, you know, they're confused, they don't understand what you're doing, is because they don't understand the faithfulness that you have and the relationship you have with your Heavenly Father. And sometimes for me, I believe it's because they themselves in their lives are not in that position, like the position you are in to understand, accept, embrace, deal with, you know, trust of what your Heavenly Father is going to do in your life and is doing in your life. A lot of times people are not there yet with their own circumstances and situations in their life. So when they look at your life, they're confused of how well you're handling it. They're confused about what you've been able to accept. They're confused about how you've been able to forgive because forgiveness in any situation of your life is critical to being able to move forward. So when his, you know, when Job is saying to his friends, like, you know, you're coming around here, you come to visit me, you're telling me these things, you're coming, you're making assumptions, you're coming to your own conclusions, and pretty much now you 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 guys are coming across like very confused about me. You shouldn't be confused about anything. I am Job. I am who I am, Job is saying. You know me by now. You've known me for years. And you know that I'm also not a robot. You know, I'm a human being. And you know that I love the Lord and I trust the Lord. And no matter what and how bad and things I feel, even though I'm down on myself, this is what's happening to me right now. And I can actually use words of kindness. I could use but words that are nicer from you. 
and not just adding more coal to the fire to make me fe- try to feel worse than what I'm already feeling. And he says here, and you came here confidently, like you were going to help me and you were going to be heroes. But here you are, like, you're not being heroes. You're like degrading me, like somewhat, you know, you're like, you know, you think like you have all the answers to my, to my problem, to my situation. You know, you came here confidently to to give me this whole statement, this whole speech monologue about what you felt I was, you know, I was dealing with and what I may have done and stuff. But you're actually confused. You don't really know what you're talking about. (laughs) Yeah, you may have given some key, like traditional, you know, regular, you know, advice. And I get that. But the rest of it is hogwash to me. Listen, I'm not saying that Job was there in any way like being even harsher to his friends than what they were his friend was being to him but he's just laying it out from his heart where he's at and i always say that there's nothing wrong with expressing ourselves of where we are in our hearts right because a lot of times you know when we're in doing pain when we're, in, we're in doing you know horrible circumstances in our lives it's not easy to deal with my friends it's hard it's hard it's very hard sometimes to deal with situations we're going through and how to remain still and how to remain, you know, respectful and professional and, you know, just, uh, you know, just in a way that you don't want to do anything irrational. And then it says here, for now you are nothing, you see terror and are afraid. Did I ever say bring something to me? In other words, he was like, did I ever call you guys and say, hey, come and bring something to me? Now that you see everything that I'm going through, to, through terror, you know, you see it horribly. You see what's happened to me. You see, he's looking at me. I'm all full of boils. I look like a ma- hot mess. You know, everything has happened. You know, did I say to you, come and, come and bring me something? Did I tell you, come and bring me, you know, your thought or your processes? I haven't asked any of you nothing. Because, you know, Job was not a Job. Job was not a person who was, who had pride. Job was a very humble man. So in other words, he's telling his friends, like, I didn't, I didn't ask you guys for anything. I didn't ask you for nothing. And, um, did I ever say, bring something to me? Come and help me with the situation? Or offer a bribe for me from your wealth? Or in other words, did I, did I say, hey, can you guys help me out financially even though I just lost it all. I lost all of my livelihood, my servants, my children, you know, half of my livestock is, you know, all gone now. Like, I never came out and said I needed anything from you guys. I didn't ask you for anything and I never said I needed money from you. He goes, and deliver me from the enemy's hand. I didn't ask you to come here and try to deliver me from the enemy's hand. Because right now, if this is what God wants me to endure and embrace and deal with and have in my life, then this is what it is. But as a human being, I'm affected by it because I have a heart and have a brain (laughs) and I have emotions and feelings, right? And then he says to them, or redeem me from the hand of the oppressors. I didn't ask you to come here and try to save me. I didn't ask you to come here and be my heroes, you know? I didn't come here to, you came here in your own accord. And obviously you came here all confidently wanting to like be my friend and and talk to me. But obviously you're very confused based on the conversation we're having. You're very confused based on what you're telling me. And you know what? Job has the right to ask his friends these questions. Because if he doesn't ask them these questions, they're never going to get why he's going through what he's going through. So my friends, you know, I don't know about you, but this, this is a lot that we can learn from. This is a lot we can learn from. I mean, as I read this passage of scripture, you know, and I was dealing with my own friend and her and that person's uh, situation. I, you know, I said to myself, 
you know, I just um, I just have to be the listening ear. I have to be the good friend who listens. I can't make assumptions. I can't make recommendations. I'm not supposed to. Because at the end of the day, uh, what they're going through is something God is allowing them to go through. But I'm just here as a friend. And I cannot make any conclusions about anything that I feel that they may have done right or wrong. I'm just to sit here and be a listening ear to my friend. And um, and just know and trust and pray with them and pray for them that God is going to do something in their lives to help them with the situation that they're in. And I cannot come in here and try to be a hero or, you know, try to guide the situation the way I feel should be guided. That's not what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm supposed to just be here, a listening friend, and not pray with my friend and pray for my friend. So my friends, I don't know about you, but this has really blessed me. This passage of scripture, it has hit home for me. Because like I said, a situation that I'm dealing with right now with a friend who's going through a struggle in their lives right now. And um, I got to tell you this, you know, this is an eye opener because this is, we have to see things the way Job is seeing it right now as he's explaining himself to his friends and speaking to his friends. So I hope you take away something very critical with this passage of scripture. If you're experiencing something like this in your own life, how we can learn from Job and the example and um, I just hope that you will continue to stay encouraged and continue to stay strong and that no matter what is happening in your life circumstances wise, that you know and trust the Lord that there will be a way that he will do something for you in your life regarding this circumstance. You must truly trust him, never let go of him, know he's always by your side, continue to have faith in, uh, in the, the good fight and that there is a hope in the future for you regarding the circumstance even though it might seem like it's never gonna end god will make a way where there doesn't seem to be a way so my friends continue to stay strong god bless you and i look forward to sharing the word of god with you next week antonia roman is the author of confessions of a christian woman a journey in marriage a new beginning in this book Antonia shares her personal journey in marriage and how she used God's word to help her overcome verbal abuse. Tune in next Saturday as Antonia Roman continues to dive into the word of God. The word of God gives you insight for the purpose in your life.